All right, we're back. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, last time we talked about forecast error and some methods for measuring forecast error. Uh, we're going to leave that behind now. Um, we can use it. We may in the, in the future. But for now, what we're going to talk about are um, some better methods for forecasting and for, uh, and for just doing some stuff to the data. So let's see what we have here. One of the things we're going to talk about is some smoothing methods. Okay, and Lots of times we'll have data that... Um, we'll move around a lot, and it'll, it'll make it hard to see an underlying uh, an underlying trend. In addition, if we're going to want to make a prediction, uh, often you know we want to take some of the noise out of what's been going on to try to make a, a best prediction for the future. Now that prediction might be wrong because of, of noise in the future, but if we can't predict the noise, I mean, if it truly is you know just random error, then our best bet is going to be um, what we might call a, a smoothed forecast. Okay, now the simplest, the most common of these is what's called a moving average. Okay, now a moving average, um, instead of using all previous data, and we looked at um, the average of past values, a moving average, uh, it, it uses the uh, most recent K data values. And I'm just using k here as a constant. Right? Recent. Uh, that's, it doesn't actually have to be k, but I'm going to use that to stand for a number. So, what does this look like? Let me hide this. Well, let's see. Let's say we had a data set that looked at monthly new memberships at a local YMCA, and we're using a moving average uh, of order 3 to predict future memberships. What we would do is we'd use 1 through 3 to predict 4. We use 2 through 4 to predict 5. Use uh, and so on and so forth, right? 3 through si 5 to predict 6. Take the average of these to get this prediction. So what does this look like more formally? Well, we have a forecast next period, right? So we're in period t. Forecast for t plus 1 um, is going to be the sum of the most recent k values divided by k. Okay, so if we're not forecasting, what we can do is we can replace a current observation with the weight of itself in the previous, so this is for forecasting. We can make a forecast. We also can do is we can do what's called a smooth series. We can use the same approach, the same intuition to try to do this. And so our smooth observation uh, we'll call this S sub T. This is going to be Y sub t minus k plus 1 plus y sub t minus k plus 2 plus dot 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 plus y t over k. Don't be taken by the, off by the notation. It's the same thing as this up here essentially, um, except instead of using it to plug in t for our next period, we're plugging it in for the current period. So we're basically creating a new uh, series. Um, so what would this look like? Well, for a three-period moving average, if we're smoothing, we have uh, three-period moving average, k equals three. And let's say we're uh, looking at period five. Well, our smooth observation, we actually saw, we see yt, but that includes all the chaos of the world, right? What we, or we see y5, sorry. We see y5. We want to smooth it. We're going to create s5, and s5 is going to be, well, y5 minus 3 plus 1 is 5, 5 minus 3 plus 1 is 3. And y5 minus 3 plus 2 is 4, y4. Um, and then we do keep doing this till we get to the current period, which is right here, y5 over k, which is 3. And you can see that this is just the average. It's just the average of three periods. 
Um, we use this notation because, well, I've, eventually we, we might use 12 periods, right? If we want to do like an an, smoothing annually, you're going to use 12 periods, in which case it can be handy to have a T and a K here that you can plug stuff in and you can you know, program something using that approach. Um, that's how it works. Now with the monthly data, if you want to consider a 12 period moving average, as I say, oh, whoops, a daisy. What does a 12 period moving average look like? Not so different. Let's say we're at period 27, and we're doing uh, for 12 period moving average. Well, why? Remember, we start with y t minus k plus one. Well, t is 27, k is 12. Now you can see that it's kind of handy to figure out which one we're supposed to start with, right? Because we're supposed to start with y, 27 minus 12 plus 1 is 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 1 is y, 16. Now if you start with that, you'll see that the smooth for 27 is going to be y, 16 plus y, 17 plus y, 18 plus y, 19 plus dot 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 plus y, 27. And that'll get, that'll give you 12 over 12, 12 addition things over 12. Okay, so that's moving average. You pick however many periods you have, and then you just add up those most recent ones, and you work that way. Okay, what else? Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, centered moving average. Let's do a centered moving average. Change colors for changing topics. Centered moving average. Now if you have a trend, the approach we just used, this one up here, might be bad because what you're doing is you're using data from the entire previous year except for this last one to make your prediction, to make your smooth observation. Now if you think you have a trend then you know you're incorporating last year's sort of baseline. Now centered moving average tries to solve this um, by using the smooth observation takes uh, some observations from before and some observations from after. For example, a five period, it's a five, obviously, five period centered moving average uh, for period T, ST looks like this. The smooth observation for period T is, well, it's going to be Y T minus two plus Y T minus one plus Y T plus y t plus 1 plus y t plus 2 over 5. Now clearly this isn't going to work for forecasting because that's the future. Um, and you can't take data from the future. But for smoothing and when we get to seasonality, which we probably won't get to today, when we get to seasonality one of the things we'll talk about is using centered moving averages to try to estimate um, a, a seasonal index. Okay, now last but not least, um, with moving averages, one of the things we might want to work with is what's called a weighted moving average. Um, by the way, I'm using an odd period here. Using even periods is a little tricky, so I'll show you how to do that in a minute once we do weighted moving averages. So we have a weighted moving average. What's a weighted moving average? Well, we might want to weight observations differently so that more recent effects are weighted more heavier than older ones. Um, it's not you can do this with centering as well if you want, um, but you you don't have to use you can you don't have to use it with centered data, um, and we can use this for forecasting. For example, uh, let's say we want to use previous three observations for our moving average, but we want to weight the the most recent one more heavily. So we want to weight the oldest at one sixth, the medium one at two sixths or one third, and the newest at three sixths or one half. The important thing is these have to add up to one. And if they do that, then these weights will be fine. So what does this look like? Well, our forecast for the next period would be. Uh, we don't want that line actually. It's one sixth times y t minus two plus two sixths times y t minus one plus three sixths y t. 
And that's another way to smooth, right? It accounts for more recent data. Alternatively, you might want to use a triangular weight for smoothing, right? So what would a triangular weight? Well, let's say we have a five period weighted center and moving average, um, and we're smoothing. Well, this might look like this. ST equals one over nine times Y T minus two plus two over nine y t minus 1 plus 3 over 9 times y t plus 2 over 9 y t plus 1 plus 1 over 9 y t plus 2. And what we've managed to do here is we have incorporated data from five different periods, but clearly we have a, a much more weight placed on um, on the current period, and then as it gets more distant in both directions, it becomes less important. It's just one one smoothing method, and this is commonly used. Um, this this approach is commonly used for trying to develop like a histogram, or or, or just it's a it's a decent way to smooth things. Um, okay, one more. Yeah, let's go. Talk, let's talk about even uh, centered moving averages. Quick. Now, let's say we have a four period centered moving average. What you would really want to do is add the previous, or no, we have a center moving average, right? So we have period one, period two, period three, period four, um, and period five, let's say. Well, if we want to do a center moving average for period three, we want to take two on each side, right? But we can't really do that. Right? We, we can't, we don't have an even number, right? Um, because if you took one, two, three, and four, right? If you took y1 plus y2 plus y3, plus y4 divided by 4, that gives you a smoothed for 2.5, right? Right, because it, it, it falls right here. Alternatively, if you did uh, y2 plus y3 plus y4 plus y5, that gives you a smooth for y3.5. So what we do, actually, is we take the average of these two to get or smoothed estimate for period two. What does that turn in turn out to look like? Well, S2 then becomes S2.5 plus S3.5 divided by two. Um, and I'll leave it to you guys. I think it's a, a decent exercise and it doesn't take much work to show that this is what that turns into. S2 becomes uh, one eighth times Y1 plus one quarter Y2 plus one quarter y3 um, is that right wait I'm sorry this is our, our forecast for period three our forecast for period three uh, I, I stand corrected one-fourth for y4 plus one-eighth for y5 and as always, whenever we do center moving averages, I didn't mention this before, but we lose data. You can't, you know, because we're using five periods, S2 actually doesn't exist. You can't, there's no smooth. S1 doesn't exist. And then at the very end, we're going to lose two on the other side as well. You're always going to lose some on either side when you create these smoothing averages. But if you do this, then essentially what you have is you have a smooth observation um, for, that has four periods worth of data, roughly. Um, so if you're, this is, comes up a lot because whenever we have quarterly data, um, that comes in fours, right? And that we need to do, we need to use something like this for that. Um, and then whenever you have monthly data, uh, that comes in twelves. And again, that gets more complicated. Um, but you have one twenty fourth plus one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, etc. All the way until you get one twenty fourth at the other end. Um, so you're incorporating 13 period, you know, you use five periods of data here and you just weight the two tails at half and here you use 13 periods and you weight the two tails at half. And that's the trick to you doing uh, even numbered uh, centered moving averages. Okay. Let's see, I think we have, we have one more smoothing method we're going to talk about. This is called exponential smoothing. So what is exponential smoothing? Well, exponential smoothing is kind of cool. Um, what we do is we say, well, in our second period, forecast in the second period is just the previous observation. So that's pretty straightforward. 
Um, and then our forecast in every future period is a weighted average of our previous period's observation and our previous period's forecast. So it's not naive exactly because we're accounting for what we thought was true. This should be plus one, sorry. FT. Right. So we had a forecast last period um, and we want to account for that. Here we have alpha is between 0 and 1. Um, and so there's some weight here and some weight here, and they add up to 1 by definition. That's how we built it. That's how we build it. And what this allows us to do is, well, if we overshot last time, that second term hedges our projection a little bit. If we undershot, it nudges it uh, up. Um, maybe, yeah, no, it's the first term that does that. But we're accounting for previous period's data. Um, but we're also accounting for our forecasting. Now, what does this do? Well, one of the cool things is that because of the way this de de is defined, this um, includes every previous period's data um, with, a, with an exponential weight. So let's just look, for example, like what's the forecast for period 57, say? Well, the forecast for period 57 is alpha times y, the output for period, or the, the observation for period 56, plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast for period 56. Well, what does that turn into? Well, we know that f56 is alpha y 55 plus 1 minus alpha f55. So that means that f57 we can plug in is alpha y 56 plus 1 minus alpha times alpha y 55 plus 1 minus alpha times f 55 and that gives us what alpha y 56 plus alpha times 1 minus alpha times y 55 plus 1 minus alpha squared times f 55 but we know that f55 includes y54, and so on and so forth, um, where this is a fraction, recall. So squaring it makes it smaller. And every, every time as you go, they continue getting smaller. These weights get smaller. So we include stuff um, from previous periods. Uh, but it just goes on forever until you get to the beginning. Now, what, what do we choose? So alpha is our what's called a smoothing parameter. And one of the things we use um, is different values of alpha. Right? So you can choose an alpha to minimize your uh, forecast error. So we talked about forecast error in the last video. If you think that there's um, that exponential smoothing is something you want to use, what you can do is you can take advantage of Excel. Excel has some uh, some functions that will allow you to try to to choose one thing to minimize another thing, right? To hit a target, um, and so you can minimize your mean square error, or you can minimize your mean absolute percent error, depending on which uh, you care more about, by selecting a, a smoothing parameter that will work. Um, and I may show you guys how to do that in a video at some point in the future. In any case, these are a few ways to uh, to do some smoothing, uh, both in forecasts and in just uh, detrending data or smoothing data, um, taking the noise out. Uh, we talked about moving averages. We talked about centered moving averages. We talked about weighted moving averages. And then we talked about uh, exponential smoothing. And next time we talk, we're going to move on to uh, estimating trend, which is uh, some cool stuff. We'll take advantage of uh, what we learned with uh, multiple regression. Um, we're not going to look at seasons right away, but we'll get we'll get there with seasons. Okay, thank you guys. Hope you uh, hope this was useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email at jjdelaney at uaelr.edu or uh, leave me a comment, and I'll be glad to be in touch soon. Thanks. Bye.